Hi, I'm Michael Prettyman, one of your pastors here at GraceWorks Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We're in the month of March 2024, which is Easter month. There are five Sundays in the month of March, and I'd like to give you a very quick rundown of what's happening on the five Sundays in March, culminating on Easter Sunday, March the 31st. Today, March the 3rd at 5 p.m., we'll be having a church-wide soup and chili dinner. I look forward to seeing all of you here. Next Sunday, March the 10th, we'll enter daylight savings time. On the downside, you'll feel like you lost an hour of sleep, but on the upside, you'll have an extra hour of daylight at the end of the day. The third Sunday in March is March the 17th, and for all of you who are big fans of wearing green, that is St. Patrick's Day. So, if you walk into church that Sunday and you see a wave of green, now you know why. The fourth Sunday in March, March the 24th, is Palm Sunday. And our Grace Kids will be waving palm branches that Sunday morning as we recreate Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And finally, the fifth Sunday in March, March the 31st, is Easter Sunday. We'll be having a baptism service as well as receiving communion that morning. I hope you'll make plans to be with us every Sunday in the month of March. Thank you again for joining us this morning, and I hope that you have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. And that's just a quick rundown of what's happening on the Sundays in March. There's a lot more going on. We have our, we're going to have an egg hunt, which I know that you guys have been bringing plastic eggs. We're doing good on those. I know that we need the little candies. That's what the kids really want is the candy. So, uh, so um, you know, they go after the eggs, but they're just cracking it open and throwing them out and eating the candy. So uh, be sure to bring your donations of eggs and candy, but, um, and you'll find all stuff in the newsletter. But uh, we're glad to see y'all here this morning. Welcome to Grace Works Church. It is officially the month of Easter. So, uh, and, and we're glad that you're here with us to celebrate on this first Sunday in March. So um, um, I'm going to go ahead and ask the quartet if they'll make their way to the stage stage. Um, you know, I, since it, it's not Easter Sunday, but it is Easter month, this is a great day to start out uh, the month of Easter talking about Jesus rising from the grave. So uh, I'm going to get Pat to roll you guys the cord, and then y'all take it away. Miss Pat. Saints to reign, he arose. 
He arose. He arose. He arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. Death cannot keep his prey. Jesus, my Savior, he tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave he arose, he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose, he arose, a victor from the vast domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, he arose, he arose, hallelujah. Christ arose. Thank you, guys. You know, I saw about maybe 20% of you singing through the verses, and then we'd get to the chorus, and it jumped up to about 80%. And I saw Bill singing. Thank you for making sure Bill's mic was not on during that. We appreciate that. And, uh, no, Bill's actually got a very nice bass voice. So, uh, but <laughs> he gets to speak a little later on, so I better be careful what I say. Anyway, glad to see you here this morning. I want you guys to go ahead and stand up right now and take time to get out there and find somebody that maybe you haven't seen yet this Sunday morning and shake their hand. Get out in the aisles. Get out in the aisles out there. Find somebody you haven't found yet this Sunday morning. Shake their hand. Tell them welcome to Grace Works Church this morning. And we're going to be singing a lot of familiar songs here this morning. So uh, don't miss this opportunity right now. Sing this together. Years. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy. Mercy there was grace and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me.
there's a lot of favorite songs out there that people have, but I know for a fact that there are people in this room that this is your favorite song, and I want you to make sure you lift your voice and sing it with us. There's something about that name. Lift your voices with us this morning. Jesus. Jesus.
Give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Thank you all for singing with us this morning, and thank you, Quartet, for leading us this morning. And uh, we're glad that you're here. You guys can go ahead and grab a seat here. And this morning, we just want to take time to talk to the Lord. I was talking with somebody this morning. <laughs> we're going to be singing a song here in a moment called Gratitude. I know many of you have had kids and teenage kids, and some of you have teenage kids right now. Sometimes you get the gratitude without the GR. You get the attitude. My mom and dad got a lot of the attitude, I think, whenever I was growing up through my teenage years. But now, they're getting the gratitude. So I love my mom and dad. And right now as we gather this morning, I can't help but think that Nothing probably pleases our Heavenly Father more than seeing all His kids come together and sing songs about Him and sing songs to Him. So right now, I can't, I just, I, I can imagine for my mom and dad, whenever all the kids get together and the grandkids get together, they just love to sit there and watch all of us interact and get along. So I pray that the Lord is pleased this morning as we're here. And right now, I want to take a moment and give you guys an opportunity just bow your heads and close your eyes and thank the Lord for something this morning. We're going to sing the song Gratitude here in a moment, but don't miss this opportunity to just talk to the Lord. Take about 30 seconds or so. just one move with my arms stretched wide I will worship
so don't you get shy on me lift up your song you got it lying inside of these lungs get up and praise the lord oh come on my soul don't you get shy on me lift up your song God, we come before you this morning to worship you. You're so good to us. And God, I speak on behalf of every person in this room this morning, God, when I tell you, God, I tell you that we love you. We love you. And God, we thank you for the gift the sacrifice, but the gift of salvation that we have only through Jesus Christ. It is in Jesus' name we pray all of these things. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. As I was uh, walking around, uh, we have one person who lives out of town, and they are looking for a house. So they drove into a neighborhood yesterday that's just being developed. And by the time they got out of the neighborhood, people were already calling them wanting to sell a, a house. So, uh, hey, what? what? How did they get all their information? So, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. And by the time you leave this service, I'm going to be like those real estate folks are. I'm going to be calling on you. I'm going to ask you to come down front and uh, maybe join the church. If you're not saved, I'm going to ask you to get saved. If you've been sinning, laying out of church or doing something horrible like that, then I'm going to ask you to repent. So are we on the same page? <laughs> all right. The Brock family's here, and all the, they're on the same page. Hey, I love you. And, uh, you know, we make a joyful noise to the Lord. So, you know, this is a wonderful time. And Michael, I think, is already out of the uh, sanctuary, gone to work with the children. But uh, blending the music today was an excellent uh, it was good for us old folks and for you young folks. There was a little bit of something for everybody. Well, I've got a, a, an interesting sermon today. Most of the time when we think of something as bad, you know, bleh, it stinks. Even if it's not a nasal smell we're talking about. It's just bad. It stinks. But I want to tell you 
that the sweetest smelling thing on this earth is sin. And, uh, you know, if you own a dog, you know my sermon already. I walk my dog around the block, and it's, I don't know, maybe a mile, half a mile around the block or whatever, probably a half a mile. But it takes us about 30 minutes because he smells every stinking odor, every dead animal, every dropping of any creature all around the block. And he enjoys it. Some of you are like my dog. You like the smell of sin. It's sweet. Now that's how you know that you're really messed up. If you can participate in sin and, you know, and it smells good, you got a problem. Well, I want to tell you about something. I don't know if you've ever heard of, uh, you know, we, we, I, when I was a kid, there used to be these movies about uh, plants that would eat people alive. Well, you know, and I was naive enough to probably believe it. But uh, actually, I was doing some research, and we know that there's these little plants that will close in on flies and little, little bitty tiny insects, stuff like that. But I want to tell you about one of these plants that's a little bit larger and can eat frogs, birds, and even larger mammals. It's called the pitcher plant. And it has this tremendous fragrance that you just can't resist. It's like Eve and Adam in the Garden of Eden. The apple. They just can't walk away. Well, you look for the animal that has been trapped in the pitcher plant. And just for the record, that's my third cousin over there on the, uh, your left. So. Now, I hope you've got that image in your mind, frozen. Because what the pitcher plant does to that monkey is doing to that monkey and other small animals. That's what sin does to people. Sin is not repulsive. If it were, we would not sin. Every one of you commits sins that are enticing. You are lured to that sin. There's something about committing it that makes you feel good. See, we are spiritually wired. We have just enough of Adam and Eve in us that we have that wiring that causes us to sniff out the aroma of sin, the fragrance of sin. And I, I, I want to tell you, it, it's tough. It's tough for me not to sin. I have to ask God to forgive me every day. I have never lived a day in my life that I did not have to ask God to forgive me of something. And most of the time, I did not engage in sin intentionally thinking, I'm going to do this sin. But I looked at it and I thought, hey, you know, this is, this is, yeah. How does it do it? Okay, you're walking down the street. And you see a man coming with three arms. He's got one in the front and one on each side. Tell me that you're not going to look at that man. Golly. Okay. Remember Eve and Adam, their temptation? was good for the eyes. They were just so drawn into this plant, unaware of the destruction that was going to take place. Paul calls it the sting of death. And we are universally lured to that fragrance. No one exempt, is exempt. Not even Jesus. 
he could smell the fragrance of sin. But he alone was strong enough. He alone was focused enough on his mission that he dared not sin. In ancient Thessalonica that received a letter from Paul, sin was rampant. And uh, Thessalonica was like the New Testament Sodom uh, from the Old Testament. Or it's like our present day Las Vegas, San Francisco, New Orleans all rolled into one. It's like Amsterdam on steroids. And idolatry and immorality, sexual immorality, were rolled into one. How bad does it have to be when you pretend to be worshiping but your mind is engaged in idolatry. At least, hopefully most of us can keep the two separate. But these people were so gone that they could not separate the two. Now imagine the impact this would have on new believers or immature believers. And they would say, well, these people have been in church for forever. Forever. My grandparents knew them, so what they're doing must be okay for me to do. And then those young people began to do the same things that we do, monkey see, monkey do. And then once you've smelled the fragrance and tasted the nectar, even though you may be aware of the danger, It's hard to get that out of your mind. Don't raise your hand, but let me ask you something. Be honest. Don't you commit the same sin over and over and over? I mean, I don't go down the ABC list. I just have the same sins. I commit time after time after time. It is my pitcher plant. Satan knows how to put those places in my steps. Now, I want to, this morning, I want to alert you to the danger signs. I'll be fairly uh, short sermon, so you listen very carefully. Danger sign number one, you tell yourself, I can look but not touch. I mean, what kind of fool do we have to be to think that we can Look, but not touch. When I see something, yeah, I want to touch it. And what the Bible says is, don't even look. The direst warning in the New Testament is remember Lot's wife. God led Lot and his wife out of the cities that were to be destroyed, out of Sodom. And he said, don't take anything with you. Don't be tainted. Leave it all behind. Just just get out of town. And they obeyed. But she turned then to take one last glimpse. And God knew that she was looking because her heart was still there. I left my heart in Sodom City. Most of us can sing that song. We left our hearts with the previous sin that we had struggled with because we're overpowered by the fragrance of sin which is so deadly and it draws us to destruction. And Let's not give any awards to Lot. We all think he was the good fellow. He just obediently followed God. No. He got out of town. But you know how he got out of town? The Bible says the angels dragged him out of town. He just got to that point where he may not have looked back, but he didn't want to go forward. Have you ever been there with sin? You just don't want to confess it. You just tell yourself foolishly, I'm not going to do it anymore. You and I cannot stand in the presence of sin without being so fascinated that it 
each away at our spiritual life. And this fascination draws us deeper and deeper and deeper into sin. And our line of defense is, I love God. But my sin is private. My sin is little. No one knows. Here's the problem. The monkey you saw, there's no cure. He's alive but dying. You, if you are deeply involved in sin, you're alive but dying. Don't tell yourself that you can look and not touch. Secondly, don't tell yourself that you can touch and not taste. Have you ever dipped your finger in the meringue of a coconut cream pie? Wow. That is absolutely wonderful. Have you ever smelled a ham or turkey baking? Have you ever patted yourself on the shoulder because you just smelled and you didn't taste? Touched it? Not taste? Now, we have some medical people, uh, and I hope that I'm right in what I'm about to say. So, Brian, you be, you be on the edge of your chair. Don't correct me publicly, but you can correct me later. But I read something that said the smell of food, the aroma of food, can affect your metabolism. So just to take a deep whiff of this food scent will make you hungry. Just to take a glance or whiff of sin will make you want to embrace the sin. Now, I want to tell you this. This is the best illustration I know. I might lose my job for it. But we live in a world, I'm going to shut my eyes and say it, we live in a world where we think a pill or a condom makes it okay for us to have reckless behavior. Does it? Absolutely not. Even if you protect yourself from the effects of sin, it creeps into your whole body. Paul compared it to leaven. A little pinch of leaven, all that you can hold between two fingers, dropped into the flour, will permeate the whole batch of flour or dough. It may take time, but eventually it will do its damage. You can't say, I'm going to sin and walk away, because sin will walk with you. The third danger, I can forgive but not forget. Oh, I wish I had, uh, you know, $100 for every time that somebody's told me, I'm not going to forget, preacher. And, you know, I wish I had never said that. But those of you who know me, know that it wasn't so long ago that I was carrying this great burden. And it went all the way back to when my wife was dying with uh, cancer. And she was verbally attacked by someone. And I, for 11 years, could not forgive that person for being so insensitive and hard-shelled. And then about a year ago, I confessed to you that I reached the point where I said, this is too great a burden. Can't keep up with it, don't want to. And I'm honest with you, it's gone. And I feel all the world better. Now, when we forgive, we have to commit ourselves to forgetting, which means we don't recite it, We don't talk about it with other friends and so forth. 
Good, good example of this is Jonah. Jonah was called to go to Nineveh to preach. And Jonah did not like the Ninevites. They had been awful to the Jews. So Jonah, though he knew what God wanted him to do, took off in the other direction. Intentionally. And finally, through a series of events, Jonah finally gave in and went and, and preached. I'm sure it was a lousy revival, but it was the Word of God. And the people of Nineveh were so convicted, they fell to the ground. They sought forgiveness. They asked for God's mercy. 120,000 people were saved that day. Wow. That beats Billy Graham's record for a single service all to pieces, and I'm serious. Billy Graham's my hero. But 120,000 people. And then you know what Jonah did? He began to complain. Oh, God, I just wanted to preach to them so that I could say, I told you so. God said, Jonah, that's not why I sent you there. I sent you there to show them my love and my grace. I don't know where God's going to send you this week. I don't know where you're going to be. But wherever you are, God wants you to show his love and his grace. And if you encounter a person and you recall something, just stop for a second, bow your head, close your eyes, and say, Lord, Forgive me. Fourth point. I can condemn, but not warn. It's so easy for us to tell people what they're doing wrong. But we don't really warn them about the effects of sin, the dangers. And I, I want to hit a couple of sensitive issues. The first one, uh, homeless people here in Chattanooga. I mean, I appreciate when we take up the uh, uh, noisy offering, and we do that four times a year. We do the children's, uh, leads us, children's department leads us in doing a lot of other things to help the homeless. And that means a lot to me. But, you know, we've got to take it another notch. I don't know how we're going to do it, but I pray for this city to get a solution that can be a nationwide model for the homeless people to have a place to sleep at night. That place is not the church floor. It's not in your house, but it's a place they can call home. Now. I'm not going to argue about why they're homeless. Could have been they were like the prodigal son. They got mad and left home. They had a wild dream and left home. Became alcoholics, drug addicts. Married five times. I don't know why they're homeless. That's not my business. Jesus doesn't ask you when he saved you to go back and recount all of your sin. He asks you to say, Lord, remember me. Think about me. And that's what I want us to do with homeless people. Which brings us to one of the two most sensitive topics in American homes, on American television stations, in American government. Illegal aliens crossing the border. I'm like the Democrats and the Republicans. I don't have an answer. The battle is obviously bigger than our nation and bigger than either political party. The battle is bigger than our 
financial system can sustain. The battle belongs to God. So I don't want politics at all. But what I want you to do, every time you hear about the battle over the issue, you just stop and say, Lord, I don't have the answer, but you are the answer. These are people made in the image of God. I once was lost. I once was spiritually blind, but now I see. I, who had no home, live in a mansion compared to those people. I'm not saying open the borders. No. I'm just saying if we want a solution, the answer is God himself. You see, the reason is because we can't be friends with Jesus if we're not going to be friends with sinners. Because Jesus has this habit of hanging around sinners all the time. I am one of those. I can testify. I don't know if you remember where you were when Jesus found you. Where you were when you heard him say, come and follow me. But you were in a state of sin, if not an environment of sin. And Jesus said, I love you. Draw to Jesus so that you won't be drawn to the fragrance of sin. The only solution to resisting the fragrance of sin is to walk with God every day. To follow wherever Jesus leads and tr trust the Holy Spirit when he brings conviction, direction in your heart, trust me, you won't imagine a good deed if it's a wrong deed. But if you imagine doing something good, you feel like that, that's the Holy Spirit calling you to do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Heavenly Father, We are attracted by different scents, each one of us. But all of us, Lord, have our preferred sins. The sins that just destroy us above all our efforts to resist. But God, we want to bear the fragrance of a sweet sacrifice being offered to you. May our lives be acceptable in your sight, O oh God. And now, Lord, on your behalf, I invite any and all to walk and rededicate his or her life, to join the fellowship of this church for support and strength, encouragement, and to enlist as a spiritual soldier to fight the battle. God, I ask that people would just forgive without saying a word to anyone to say, I'm letting go. Lord, touch our hearts. Lead us right now. God, if we need to know Jesus Christ as our Savior, this is the moment we come. Amen. Would you stand as we sing together? And if God is speaking to you, uh, you come forward. We'll have a couple of other folks here who will be glad to talk to you. I will talk to you, but we want to help you. God bless. Will you all sing this with me? Say, I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. And I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and you rose again. Let's sing that chorus together. Sing amazing love. Oh, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? Amazing love. I know it's true, and it 
It's my joy to honor you. Now, if you're coming, come on. We're going to sing that chorus again. Here we go. Say amazing love, oh, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? Sing amazing love, and I know it's true. It's my joy, and it's my joy to honor you in all I do, hey, in all I do, I honor you. Say, you are my king. You, you are my king. Say, you. Jesus, say you, you are my King. Oh, Jesus, say you, that you are my King. Sing that chorus with you now. Say amazing love, oh, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Sing amazing love. It's my joy. Say it's my joy to honor you and all I do. Hey, and all I do, I honor you and all I do. Hey, and all I do, I honor you. One more time and all I do. Hey, and all I do, I honor you. Thank you. Would you be seated? You know, when, when Tony and I are, are down front and we come to the end of what we think is going to be the invitation, we always give Michael a signal. So, you know, it's not we're scratching our back, but we always do like this, you know, something other. And uh, so, but Michael, he'll just go on and sing as long as he wants to. But I appreciate you, Michael. Appreciate you. But it's sort of like God. You know, sometimes God says, okay, hey, cut it out, cut it out, you know, right now. You know, I got to tell you something. This... Uh, Dear lady who's in the wheelchair, Angel has been, uh, she and her husband John have been visiting with us for a long, long time, and I told her this morning, I said, you are the first holy roller I've ever accepted into the church. So John and Angel, you come up here and whirl around. We are so happy to have you, uh, and uh, you know, uh, aren't you glad? Jo join me in. Next couple, Tim and Amanda, come on. I think that y'all were here about the time I got here. So y'all were just real, real young folks. And every Sunday we keep asking them, are you going to join? Are you going to join? Yeah, we're going to join, preacher. And uh, I, I nearly just about passed out when I saw you getting out. So <laughs> Tim and Amanda Thompson and their family. Yes, welcome, welcome. Good. And we are so happy. And what we're going to do is, if you all will make your way out to the lobby, we'll be following you. And uh, that way people can come by. We'll get a picture of you. And uh, let folks welcome you to Grace Works. Thank you. God bless. Good to, yeah. yeah, it's yours. All righty. Well, I'm going to preach a sermon now. Turn in your Bibles. No, I'm kidding. Okay. So, um, hey, uh, just a couple of quick things. This afternoon, we have our soup and chili dinner at uh, 5 p.m. I, I think most of you guys know if you're um, if you're bringing a chili or something like that, you need to get here about 3:30 uh, uh, so we can kind of get that uh, set out. I think some other people are going to be here a little bit earlier doing some decorating and stuff. Um, but uh, we want to make sure we have everything ready to go so we can be ready to go about you know 4:30 because we always have people who get here early you know when food's involved they're here early Linda where are you so uh but uh <laughs> but uh but anyway uh so this afternoon 5 p.m soup and chili dinner I'm asking at anybody who is available we have some people that are helping but anybody who's available if you will help us put some tables out I'll stay on the microphone here and kind of like you know guide you around but we're gonna get tables and put them out so if you're willing to help that we're gonna transform this sanctuary into tables so we can eat here this evening and then uh, Mary's gonna be back here getting people Mary Holland's kind of heading it up and she's gonna be back here kind of getting the table set up for serving and things like that so 
that's my announcement for this afternoon. So I'm going to get you to stand up for the last announcement. I think you know what it is. There you go. The offering boxes. Thank you so much. There are offering boxes in the back of the sanctuary. If you brought your offering this morning, uh, please drop that off in there. And uh, I'm going to sing you out with a song at Calvary. But God bless you. We'll see you back here later. Help me out with those tables, okay? Here we go. And the years I spent in vanity and pride, caring that my Lord was crucified, and knowing that it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, and pardon there was multiplied to me, and there my burdened soul found me. God bless you. We'll see you a little bit later on here.